Good morning, folks. We'll update the tsunami damage momentarily, but let's begin with our star. Look at the size of these plasma filaments arching up into the corona. These will turn in to face Earth in just a few days, and will likely be the primary eruption threat on our star when they do. Looking at the Earth-facing half of the Sun, increasing flashes of flare activity, especially from the more complex sunspot groups. Just this morning, a longer duration sea flare may have pumped out a CME directly in Earth's line of fire, but it would be a smaller CME, if anything. Spaceweathernews.com showing the X-ray flux with increased flaring, but today, we may not see quite as much. The three Earth-facing sunspot groups are either magnetically simple or losing their complexity. I no longer see any Delta-class areas on our star. The solar wind is settling into ambient calm. Even a slightly above average density to the stream isn't causing much instability with Earth's shield. As we mentioned yesterday, the green positive coronal hole is exiting as the red negative one comes in. You can see the red is a dark patch here on the left in 211 angstroms, and since we are between coronal holes, earthquake factor drops and it's just aftershocks to the Chile quake populating the list today. But let's look back and recap some of the devastation from that quake and tsunami event. At least a dozen people are dead, and there's likely more than a billion dollars worth of damage. The worst tsunami was only 15 feet, but it lasted for 20 minutes, which changes the way you think about a 15-foot wave. Luckily, the warnings are about over now, and even with an entire Pacific Ocean worth of readings, they are small. Three feet in Hawaii, six inches in California, two feet at Easter Island could have been much, much worse. Moving on to our top articles, including new Pluto shots. Mountains, planes, nitrogen, water, hazy atmospheric layers. Click away and be mesmerized. Also got an August water map from NASA's Earth Observatory. Three charts on that page, actually, but it leads us into the August state of the climate report. We remain above average in temperature, but there's a lot more cold on the map than I expected given the current strong El Nino precipitation data there too. Folks, in a month from now, observing the frontier will be ending in Pittsburgh. If you've been on the fence, let me give you a little nudge. My four talks are just a slice of what brilliant minds in our community are going to present, and there isn't a better time of year to be in western Pennsylvania. West Pacific with a typhoon candidate that is slated to miss Japan. Tropical development in the Atlantic is weak and non-threatening. I've got the precipitable water overlay illuminating the convergence lines, bringing the top alerts to our top viewer locations. They always curl away from a low-pressure node. Down under, getting lucky as none of the convergences crest the land. I'm keeping that water lay on and going around the world before we check in on the temperature conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.